All right, peace, 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 peace. Hit the like and subscribe, guys. Do it now and share if you're really supporting. So I'm sure you guys heard about the Disney admits LGBTQ agenda. Uh, the Disney CEO admits that it's they're pushing a gay agenda. And they got a new series of movies or something like that coming out. And a lot of people were shocked or surprised. I know a lot of, I've seen a lot of posts from Christians and stuff saying, oh, they're unsubscribing. And I think it's funny that people have missed what Disney movies have been about this entire time. So I'm probably gonna put some pictures on the screen just to give a little context. But um, the reality is Disney movies have always been about the exact same thing. Um, all Disney movies, not all, but the majority of Disney movies that, I've, that I know about are all about rebellion. And ironically enough, the Bible says rebellion is likened onto the sin of witchcraft. There's a verse in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, that says, For rebellion is like the sin of divination or witchcraft, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry, right? Because you're idolizing yourself to be arrogant, right? Um, so that's that's a chapter. So, so ironically enough, what you'll notice is that there is a real link between witchcraft and rebellion, right? And then as I began to do a little bit of research and read, what I noticed and realized was not only are a lot of Disney movies about rebellion, but a lot of Disney movies are also about witchcraft, right? So it's an introduction to getting young kids with impressionable minds into accepting that witchcraft is okay. And you can also use witchcraft to find true love. So that if you want to be a princess or a prince and you want to be married or you want to have a, a nice and beautiful life, if you want to have a happy ending, that rebellion and witchcraft is the way to it, right? And there's a common link in all the movies that show and display that rebellion is is rebellion and witchcraft leads to happiness, right? And so you got impressionable minds and you're letting Disney, who, it, I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard about broadcasting and the casting of spells, right? And you, so you're allowing broadcasting to cast spells on your children that are opening up their minds to these ideas. And as their minds become open to these ideas, so do the demons that are responsible for influencing these behaviors come on the scene. I gave the analogy in the last video about demon, demonic spirits are like flies, Right. If you leave food out, flies just show up. If you have fruit on the table, fruit flies just pop out of nowhere. You can seal all your windows, you can seal all your doors. But if you leave fruit at the at fruit out on the table at the right time of year, somehow fruit flies disappear. Somehow they find a way in. They're not a respecter of persons. They don't say you you, you don't get to tell the fruit flies. No no no. I want that fruit. Don't eat that fruit. That's the fruit that I want. They come to eat fruit, regardless of whether you want it or not. They're not respecters of persons. They're there to do a job. So whether you like that fruit, whether you're about to come back to that fruit later, whether that fruit is for your baby that you love so much, it does not matter. The fruit flies come and do their job. So when we have certain content on, when we're allowing our children to watch witchcraft, when we're allowing our children to watch rebellion, when we're, we're, when we're allowing the wrong things on our screens and our television sets, right, we're inviting the demons appear on the scene and they're there to do a job. They're there to, to rob, kill and destroy. They're there to consume. So the moment you have that content on, just like fruit flies show up when there's fruit, demons show up on the scene when, 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 when movies about rebellion and witchcraft are being played on the screen. It's an invitation for them to show up. They show up on the scene and they look for fruit to devour, right? Or, or, or the same way fruit flies show up on the scene and they look for fruit to devour, demons show up on the scene and look for people to devour when they show up that are inviting them into their house by playing this content on the television screen and by letting their children watch it. They show up on the scene looking for something to devour, right? And, and they don't care that it's a child. The same way the fruit fly doesn't care if you, that's your, that's your final strawberry and, you, and it was really tasty and you want to save it for later. They don't care if it's a child. They don't care if it's an adult. Demons are there to rob, kill, and destroy men, women, children, whatever, right? And if they can get your pet, they're going to get your pet too, right? So, they're there to whisper now. Once you open the door to them, they're, they're, they're there to whisper and influence and look for a direct doorway and opening directly into that child's life to live in them, right? And the broadcasting, the lulling of their mind to sleep, right? With the television screen, the hypnotism that's happening on the television screen, lulling the mind to sleep is, is, is lowering the subconscious, lowering the vibrations, putting the mind into a state of hypnosis for the broadcasting spells to be cast onto them on the television set and also lulling them to sleep into a state of meditation and hypnotist to where the demons can enter their life. We got to be very careful. Um, this has always been happening. It ain't, it ain't just because they came out pushing an agenda or admitting to pushing an agenda. They've been doing this from the beginning. If you look in their logo, which I'm going to put on the screen, or it's probably already there, the 666 is in their logo. 
in several different places, right? You can see several subliminal messages in the movie The Lion King, the, the word sex written in the air and, and other words that are, that are the names of spirits. And who knows, but that's, that's things that we're catching blatantly. Who knows what else is there that we're not able to see with the naked eye. The interesting thing about cartoons is with cartoons, they're drawing lots and lots of pictures and just playing them at rapid speed. So you can draw something into a picture for a, a millisecond. And to just play it into the scene. So if you want to flash an emblem or a symbolism, or you want to flash spells or curses or, 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 or satanic symbols, you can flash it so quick the mind will never catch it. Because you, all you have to do is just write it or draw it on one of the slides. And it's just a bunch of slides flashing. It's going to pass. You won't even catch it. But it's there. But the mind catches it. But it still opens up the mind and the doorways to the, to the, to the, to the, to the evil one, right? Um, and this is all very serious, guys. This is all very serious. I just want to be, be clear. This is nothing to play with. Witchcraft is a serious offense against God. That's why I read Samuel. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance is like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the Lord of the Lord, he has rejected you as king, right? Uh, First Chronicles verses 10 through 13 says, Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance, right? So he consulted a medium for guidance. This was evil, right? You, we're supposed to consult God. It says, Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31 says, Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And Leviticus 20 verse 6 says, I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them, and I will cut them off from their people. Right. Isaiah chapter eight, verse 19 through 22 says, when someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land when they have famished. All right. So here's the thing. Right. This is the reason why people 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 consult witchcraft, demonic spirits, divination. Right. And, 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 and ironically enough, love and the desire for love, because love is such a strong and powerful emotion, is a huge doorway for people to, to consult witchcraft. Right. Because they try to consult witchcraft to get this love because love is, is overcomes all. Love is so powerful and strong, which is why we're commanded to love one another. Because love is the strongest thing. And love is so strong that people consult demonic spirits, div divination, spirit, spiritualists and witchcraft so that they can have love. Right, I'm living in the country now where there's a lot of you, you, you. There's lots of stories I hear about of people that consult witches and witchcrafts and do sorcery and spells. Just th that's how they met their wife. They saw her, she was beautiful. They cast a spell on her, and if she don't know the Lord, then she's not covered and protected. So she fell victim to the spell. Right, so love is a huge doorway for these things to come in, and 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 the reason why people. Um, so the, the 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 thing that's so big about this that we all have to understand is that. Love is such a powerful emotion, and so when people consult witchcraft and divinators and spiritualists, because God is not moving on their time, right? The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control, right? Right? Forbearance, right? So they're not patient enough to wait for the response of God, right? God knows the right time to give them the answer. He knows when they're ready to receive it, so they begin to seek other means so that they can get an instant result. Right? They don't want to put in the work. They don't want to be patient. They don't want to rely on God. They don't want to trust in him. They don't want to have faith. They don't want to build their faith. And so in not wanting to build their faith and believing and trusting that God will answer them when the time is right. And when the time is ripe, they say, I'm going to usurp God and find an answer for myself. Right? How many of us do that in many areas of our lives? It's not happening fast enough, so I'm going to usurp God and do it on my own. I don't, I don't want God to provide for me. I want to provide on my own. And I know a method that can make this happen instantly, so why wait on God, who's going to give me the perfect thing at the perfect time when it's perfectly ready and prepared for me? No, I can get something that I want instantly right now, right? And, 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 and you'll also get all the consequences that come with it for you not relying on God. We can usurp God. We can decide that we can't endure anymore. The Bible says endure to the end, you will be saved. We can decide, man, I can't endure anymore, so I'm going to go rob a bank. I need to pay, I need to take care of my family. I don't have food. I don't have money. And I can't endure. I can't wait on God. I'm going to go rob a bank, which is equivalent to 
you know, I, I want to get married. I want a husband. I want this. I'm going to go consult the witchcraft and do a spell or, or a potion or, or, or put blood in the spaghetti or whatever it is so that I can capture this love because I want love, right? And, and not only do I want love, I want love in the midst of my sin. I don't want to stop fornicating. I don't want to stop watching pornography. I don't want to stop masturbating. I don't want to, I, I just want my love how I want it now. I don't want to correct myself. I don't want to make myself better. I don't want to improve. Just give me my love now. And if God, if you won't do it, I, I'm gonna go to the witchcraft. I'm gonna go to the witch doctor. I'm gonna buy the crystals. I'm gonna buy. The, I'm gonna do the chakra massages. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do the all, all these different uh, new age techniques. I'm gonna do the law of attraction. I'm gonna do the meditation. I'm gonna do the love meditation. I'm gonna do all these things to get my love because you're not moving on my time, God. And you're not good enough, God, for me. I need to be God for myself because you don't know what I need, God. How do you know God doesn't need you to stay where you are? How do you know He doesn't need you to sit there and endure to build discipline? so that you can actually be a compatible and suitable partner for the woman that he has for you or the man that he has for you? How do you know? How do you know he's not building you? God says not, not, not a sparrow falls to the ground outside of his sight. Not even a bird falls out of the sky that he doesn't know about. He knows what you need. He knows what you want. And he knows whether or not you should or shouldn't have it. Instead of being, what if he says, you, you don't deserve to have that? Can you submit and, and obey? Right? Can you submit and obey and wait on him or trust that he knows better than you know for yourself? Or are you just going to usurp God and consult and rebel and, and, and consult witchcraft? So I'm going to open up there. Now, I, I want to read um, a couple of just summaries and synopsis of certain Disney movies, just so you guys can get a little taste of what I'm talking about here, right? I'm going to just, here we go. So this is Aladdin, which is the most popular Disney movie of all time, according to what I've seen. I'm not sure if it's number one, two, or three, but it's one of the most popular ones. It says, Aladdin is a lovable street urchin who meets Princess Jasmine, the beautiful daughter of the Sultan of Agrabah. While visiting her exotic palace, Aladdin stumbles upon a magic oil lamp. Here we go, a magic oil lamp. We're getting into witchcraft, right? That unleashes a powerful, wise-cracking, larger-than-life genie. So a demon, right? He can he 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 um finds uh, a lamp and, and 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 is able to consult a demon for help, right? As Aladdin and the genie start to become friends, they must soon embark on a dangerous mission to stop the evil sorcerer Jafar from overthrowing young Jasmine. So it's sorcerer against sorcerer. You got the evil sorcery and you got the good sorcery. So the evil sorcery is Jafar. He's the one that's evil looking. He has an evil countenance on his face. He's consulting the evil spirits. And you got Aladdin. He's consulting the blue, bubbly, uh, 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 colorful and fun and enjoyable, loving, kind and joyful and helpful spirit. So it's, the, it's him with his demon versus is Afar and his demon, but Afar has the evil demons and Aladdin has the good demons, right? That's, that's one of the things that's betrayed. There are no good demons. There's no good spirits versus bad spirits. We have the Holy Spirit that is given to us from the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. But the spirits, anything con that you're consulting with that is not directly from the Father is, is evil, right? Demons will masquerade. The Bible says the devil comes as an angel of light. And, and that's what Disney movies are. Disney movies are angels of light to get into the hearts and minds and the houses of your children so that they can inject the true message that they want the children to have from a young child, right? Because a child's mind is impressionable at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 years old, right? And then once you put witchcraft and rebellion in their mind, they mature into that as they age. Now let me read more of Aladdin, right? Aladdin is a young boy living with his mother in poverty in a town in China. Where's his father? His father died recently, having tried unsuccessfully to persuade his son to knuckle down and learn a trade. So here you have a father saying, son, come learn a trade. And he says, no, dad, I'm rebelling against you. I don't want to follow your instruction, dad. You don't know what's best, right? I'm going to go my own way. There goes your rebellion. Aladdin, however, prefers to go off and play with the other boys in the street. And instead of following his father, learning a trade, he says, nope, he runs off and wants to play with other boys in the street. One day a sorcerer, so, you know, and this and this, this happens like this, right? This is a bit, a bit of truth here, right? Aladdin rebels against his father, goes against his father's wishes, and then one day a sorcerer approaches Aladdin, claiming to be his uncle. He convinces Aladdin to work with him. So Aladdin wouldn't work with his own father, but he's going to work with this random guy uh, saying that he's his uncle, who's a sorcerer, right? He convinces Aladdin to work with him, telling Aladdin that if he does what he tells him, the boy will grow up to be rich. Aladdin's mother, who has never met the sorcerer before, is initially suspicious of his claim to be a long-lost relative, but she becomes convinced that the man is genuine. Okay, that's one. You got rebellion against his dad, and all of a sudden he's following this random guy who's a sorcerer, right? 
which, which is a truth. When you, re when you rebel against your parents, you will be introduced to new paths of rebellion and sin. Um, uh, so anyway, so, so for the sake of this fairy tale, don't learn the trade, which is actually practical in real life, that, that if he, act, in real life, Aladdin should have followed his father. But in a Disney fairy tale world that you can make a reality if you're a child and watch this movie, you can rebel and meet a sorcerer and have, and have um, a beautiful love by the sake of the consulting of demons, right? And your demons, and then he even uses the demons to, to, to steal the wife from the kingdom. And, and, and so he's using demons and, and, and all kind of stuff to steal love, right? It's, it's, it's all complete witchcraft, right? Masqueraded in colorful cartoons so that you don't understand what's happening. Um, you got The Little Mermaid. I'm going to just read the summary and synopsis of The Little Mermaid. In Disney's beguiling animated romp, rebellious 16-year-old mermaid Ariel, it, it tells you there. In Disney's beguiling animated romp in The Little Mermaid, this is the actual description of the film. It says rebellious 16-year-old mermaid Ariel. It's even in the description it's telling you she's rebellious, right? Rebellious 16-year-old mermaid Ariel is fascinated with life on land. On one of her visits to the surface, which are forbidden by her controlling father, right? How many young girls think they have a controlling father because he's trying to show them righteously, right? That's another narrative, right? Oh, the father's controlling. He doesn't know best. He doesn't know, he doesn't know how men really are. He doesn't know what's best for your life, right? Be, rebel against the controlling father. Control is bad. Instruction and wisdom is bad, right? King Triton, so one, on one of her visits to the surface, which are forbidding by her controlling father, right? Her father's labeled as controlling because he doesn't want her to go to the surface. He wants her to stay in her role, in her tradition, right? King Triton, she falls for a human prince, determined to be with her new love. Ariel makes a dangerous deal with the sea witch. Here she goes. Here's a witch. She's making a deal with the witch here, right? She's making a deal with the sea witch, right? Ursula, to become human for three days. So she makes a deal, right, to become a human for, to, to become a human for three days, to shapeshift for three days, right? But when plans go awry, for the star-crossed lovers, the king must make the ultimate sacrifice for his daughter, right? Um, again, and she's bringing her father into trouble, rebellious and witchcraft. Again, rebellion and witchcraft, that's two for two, right? Aladdin, rebellion and witchcraft. The Little Mermaid, rebellion and witchcraft. Let's look at the beauty and the beast. This is the summary of the beauty and the beast. This is just a quick summary. I don't even remember what's in these movies, but this is the quick summary. Um, and, and I'm sure there's a lot more within the layers, right, if you actually get into the movie. This is just an overall summary. The Beauty and the Beast synopsis. An arrogant young prince and his castle servants fall under the spell of a wicked enchantress. Already. Here we go. An arrogant young prince, right? There we go. Arrogance, right? And uh, the fall under the spell of a wicked enchantress, right? So witchcraft, again, right in the first line of the movie. Who turns him into the hideous beast until he learns to love and be loved in return. The spirit headstrong village girl enters the beast's castle after he imprisons her father. With the help of his enchanted servants, including the matrimony Mrs. Potts, a belly begins to draw the cold-hearted beast out of his isolation, right? So she ends up falling in love with a demon. The beast is a demon, however you want to call it. And the, there's a point in the movie where she, um, he gives her a, a magic mirror and a magic ring, and a, a magic mirror and ring allows her to teleport. And he says, you can go see your father, but you can't leave me for longer than a week right? Because otherwise I'll die of grief, right? So you can, you can live your life, but as a demon, I still need to be fed. I, I still need your sin. I still need your energy. So here, use this witchcraft, go see your dad, but then you must return to me because you're mine, right? And then she ends up marrying the guy, that, the demon that captured and imprisoned her, and he ends up turning into a handsome prince, and she marries her, right? But this is all a fairy tale, but it's a fairy tale. So, so the, 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 the ironic part is that all of this stuff is real. The only thing that's not real is the happy ending at the end, right? The demon doesn't turn into the handsome prince. He actually turns into a, into a, he might appear to you as the handsome prince and then turns into the beast. He doesn't turn into the handsome priest at the end, right? You don't get married and become a human as a mermaid at the end, right? Aladdin doesn't get the princess at the end, right? And even if he does, in the end of his life, he's condemned to hell, right? Because he disobeyed the will of God, right? So, I, I, I just want to say that all these paths are real. These movies are real. They're not just cartoons. These things are real, right? They're colorified and made beautiful and made, made, made palatable for children in cartoons, but these things are real. However, they do not end with the happy ending at the end. There is no happy ending. I made a tweet about this on Twitter. Make sure you guys are following me on all my social media. I'm Eddie Fuse on everything. I made new social medias after I changed my, my life. Eddie Fuse on Twitter. Go follow me now. Eddie Fuse at, on Instagram. Go follow me now. I don't have a, a Facebook right now. 
And uh, I use Clubhouse sometimes. Eddie Fuse on Clubhouse. You can go follow me there. And my email is eddiefuse at gmail.com. If you have any questions, if you need help, guidance, you want to talk about God, need deliverance, whatever you need, I'm there. Um, I made a tweet. And my tweet said, the majority of Disney movies are about rebellion, rebelling against parents, culture, and traditions to seek your own individual happiness, teaching children that doing what makes them happy is more important than following the instructions and guidance of their parents. So the, what Disney movies are about is what makes you happy is more important than God because witchcraft is against God. Rebellion is against God. The, God, the Bible says, honor your mother and your father so your days can be longer, right? God sees all, right? He sees all. He'll make a way for you, but abide in him and obey him and ultimately you will be saved. You will be rescued, right? He, he, you, you will be saved in the end, right? The Lord will slay the dragon. You will be saved in the end. And even if your life had to not be the best, this life is a short life to represent the eternal life that we have later. So that's the, the message of the day, guys. Peace, peace, and love. Man, I'm Eddie Fuse. I believe Jesus Christ is Lord, King of kings, and Lord of lords, and Master, ruler of the heavens and the earth, and the Father in heaven, the Father that gave his Son so, to die on the cross for the sins of the world so that all who believe unto him can be saved, is my Father, and Jesus Christ, the Son, is my Lord. And, he, and, and now his Spirit is on the earth with us, uh, to guide us and, and lead us uh, onto righteousness in the eternal path. And you can receive that Spirit when you believe unto Jesus Christ. If you have any questions, need any help, any advice, and whatever it is, email me. My three-hour class, get it, guys. Go join the Patreon right now diamond platinum i got a new three hour class coming class number four the reason you're alive i'm gonna talk about the reason why you're alive uh, that's the message of the day guys hit the like button hit the subscribe and make sure that you're a member on patreon and in a comment put the comment in the comment section peace 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 peace, peace. thank you guys